If you love novels by Taylor Jenkins Reid, then you might already know that today's guest is starring in the film adaptation of one of her most popular books. Aisha Harris joins Camila Marone, Suki Waterhouse, and Sam Claffin in the new Amazon series, Daisy Jones and the Six. Aisha is taking us through her favorite parts of filming and more. This is Advocate Now. Aisha, congrats on the release of the new miniseries, Daisy Jones and the Six. It's, of course, adapted from the best-selling novel of the same name. So tell me about the series and what it was like filming. Oh, wow. Uh, thank you, Sonia. Um, wow, the series was incredible to shoot. Um, anytime you're doing a, a period piece, you know, you feel like it kind of takes you a little deeper into the character. Um, the show was incredible. It's about a 1970s rock band. Uh, there are ebbs and flows to the rise of fame and to the depths of despair. <laughs> it's a love story, um, a beautiful love story. Uh, and it kind of just reflects on how messy things can get um, as in life. What do you think the song is about? What do I think the song is about? What the song yeah, what that is I wrote? The song what do I think the song that I wrote is about? It's about starting a new life. I don't know who I am. It's about dreaming of something different. Well, the book is so loved by so many people. Did you have any hesitation joining a project that's based on something that people already know and adore, or did that actually further your interest? Uh, it furthered my interest. Um, you know, you want some something that people are already engaged in. Um, sometimes people can look at that as like a pressure situation, like you want to get everything right. Um, but I, I find it to be completely opposite. You know, you want something that has a little buzz around it. You want something to live up to, um, kind of like a, a, a standard that you don't want to kind of flow below. Um, so it was, it was, it was nice to have the anticipation in the, in the, in the, in the air. So yeah, I, I actually preferred it. You've had a successful career in this industry, but would you consider this series almost a turning point? in your career? Because it was recently announced you're going to be starring alongside Rain Wilson in an action comedy called Code Green. <laughs> Have you been seeing more opportunities presenting themselves? Oh, 100%. Um, anytime you have a good showing, you know, uh, you, you're going to get a little flow your way. Um, but no, uh, being a part of a show of this magnitude um, has really propelled me um, into some rooms that maybe I, I, I wouldn't have been able to get into. Uh, so it's been it's been remarkable um, just being a part of such a really an incredible cast and a really great story. Well, you also recently made your feature film debut with Tell It Like a Woman, which is so beautiful and empowering. It tells the stories of seven different women around the world and it's directed by seven female directors. So what does it mean to you to be a part of a project that unites women from all over the world? Oh, wow. Um, I was blown away actually to be uh, picked for, for this role, um, having to personally audition for Taraji P. Henson, one of the one of the directors, um, being having the opportunity to work with Kim Carter uh, on set, who the story is about, our our particular uh, story in the series, and it's just incredible to be able to tell someone's story and then have them there and 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 tell you that you're doing a great job and that you're capturing the essence of uh, the experience of being them. So it was. It was remarkable and being so close to Jennifer Hudson and Taraji and watching how they work, um, it was just such a valuable experience. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about working with, with both of them. I mean, were there any takeaways from working with these powerful women? <sighs> Stay in the moment. You know, uh, the way that Jennifer can just drop in and tap in, I was just in awe. I was literally sitting on the side at sometimes when I'm not in the scene, just watching like, wow, like taking notes um, and watching Taraji, uh, how she moves, how she uh, commands her respect and, uh, and, and her vision um, is, is laser focused. So it was really, um, I felt very lucky to, to watch uh, these two women up close. You've been hurt so bad. Your walls are so thick. What happened to you? What happened to me? I want to talk about your career path because you've had a really interesting journey 
before pursuing acting full time, you owned a barber shop. Tell me about that and how you fell into that. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> barbering. So, um, wow. So many avenues of how I fell into that. I guess the major one was a really good friend of mine um, told me that he thought I'd be a great barber because I'm an artist on paper. Mm -hmm. uh, started barbering, uh, worked with all men, a lot of great guys. Uh, but I really realized that uh, the gay community got was really marginalized in the in the uh, in the barber shop, um, and I felt like it was time to create a safe space for my community. Uh, so I branched out from the barber shop that I started at um, and opened up a all female run uh, barber shop in West Hollywood, um, catering to the gay community, uh, and it, it it was just a, a beautiful experience um, right in the Fairfax district. Very successful. Um, and it's just something special doing something that you love and then being able to uh, hold space uh, for folks. And uh, it's just been a very remarkable experience. Well, in 2019, that shop was destroyed in a freak accident. And it was after that that you actually decided to give acting a go. Did you almost see that as a sign from a higher power? A hundred percent. I'm a very spiritual woman and uh, I have been asking for a change. You know, I felt like. I had done all I could um, in that space um, and wanted to just like explore more into the arts again, uh, something that was just for me. Uh, and yeah, with, with the freak accident happening, uh, which was a wild story all in itself. Um, and then COVID, uh, you know, put a lot of things into perspective, you know, um, what, what direction your life is going in and in what way it could go. Uh, so I decided to just take a chance and say, you know what? We're gonna go full time, see what it feels like. And uh, here we are. Had that accident not happened, do you think that you would still have eventually pursued acting full time? Yes, my partner uh, was very adamant about me uh, pursuing acting full time and I, and I was doing it part time uh, and it got back into commercial work um, as everything started to transition at the barbershop. So I feel like I think it would have gotten there eventually, um, but at the timing, you know, I may not have been included in Daisy Jones. So I, I'm, I'm very grateful for the timing of everything, you know, um, but I think I would have made my way back at some point. It's always been a love of mine. Looking back now, do you think owning that barbershop and working with so many different types of people helped to prepare you for the career that you're in now? A thousand percent. Um, watching people, you know, and managing people, uh, watching the nuance of the human condition up close. You know, uh, having so many different clients uh, over the years, watching so many people come through the door, watching how people interact with each other, when they like a thing, when they love a thing, when they're lying about a thing. Uh, you you pick up all of these little characteristic traits and it's um, and you kind of store, at least I was, I was kind of storing it um, in my little piggy bank in my brain, like, you know, this is how people, this is, these, these are like the visceral reactions when people aren't saying words, you know, um, when you read the body language and it was little did I know I was, you know, getting all this information for later, but it's been very valuable in the, in the field of acting, having interacted with so many people over the years. What would you say to people who have a creative passion like acting and they want to pursue their dreams, but maybe they're too fearful or have too many self doubts? Or I think the big one is, you know, the question of whether it'll pay the bills. But what would you say to those people? I would say go for it and not go for it in, in, a, in a reckless way where, you know, you're 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 up, up upheaving your life or anything like that. But I, I feel that we have convinced ourselves that we don't have enough time for the things that we love. Um, and I know for a fact that there is plenty of time in the day if you put some time aside for yourself, which is really the only thing that matters is, your, is yourself, um, to do the things that you love, you know? Um, and they will pay dividend. You have to be open to um, but the different pathways that can get you to your destination. I think sometimes people fixate so much on on a particular way to do a thing and to be open to the, the infinite possibilities of uh, of the way that you get to that particular goal well aisha congratulations on everything that you've got going on we're excited to continue to see your career bloom and blossom and everybody make sure to check out daisy jones and the six on amazon prime video aisha thank you so much for being here we appreciate it thank you so much man i appreciate it
I'm Sonia Baghdadi. Thanks for watching and advocating. For more stories and content like this, visit advocate.com and advocatechannel.com.